Hello and welcome to the first video tutorial for Coherent UI in Unity 3D. I'm Nick from the Coherent Labs team and today I'm going to show you the basics of using the Coherent UI package. Okay, let's start. We have a new project in Unity set up and I've already prepared the Coherent UI package. So just double click it. We're going to see a list of the files and hit import. We're going to wait for Unity to import the assets. And after that's done, there's one more step that we need to do, which is installing Coherent UI. This is needed because the package structure that's required by the asset store is not compatible with Coherent UI and we need to move some resources. Okay, we can do that by right clicking right here, going to the Coherent UI entry and install Coherent UI. You can also do that using the Assets menu, Coherent UI, Install Coherent UI. Let's just do that. When the installation is complete, you're going to see a notification right here. So there it is, Coherent UI installation complete. Now, before we start, let's just take a brief look at the contents of the package. Here we have the documentation, some editor scripts, and samples. Each sample has its own scene, as you can see. So let's just check out the binding sample, for example. Just hit play and we're gonna have some game options. And a Quake console. Okay, next, the plugins and the streaming assets folders contain coherent UI binaries that are used to render HTML pages. And the developer scripts are located in standard assets, scripts, coherent UI. Here you can see the two main components that you're going to use, the coherent UI system and the coherent UI view. The system is a global object that uh, manages the communication between Unity 3D and coherent UI. And the view is the visible object that you can attach to pretty much anything like a camera or a 3D object and is going to render HTML content and execute JavaScript. So let me just show a really simple example. We're just going to make a new scene and add the coherent UI view component. It's already have some default setup, so just hit play. And we already have a page displayed. We can see the properties that you can modify here, like the URL, the width and the height of the coherent UI view the initial script that is going to be executed when the page is loaded, transparency, click through, click to focus. The click to focus feature enables you to forward input by clicking on the view. Is on demand. On demand views is on demand views are a special type of view that uh, synchronize the game and the UI perfectly. Target frame rate, draw after post effects. This can be used to draw coherent UI views before or after the post effects, flip uh, the y-axis, which flips the y-axis, and these last two are related to the JavaScript binding that we're not going to talk about right now. Okay, so we've got a fully functional website, but at the moment we don't have any input. We can fix that using two simple methods. The first method is to to just use the click the focus feature by just checking this box and hit play again. So now initially we don't have any input, but when we click anywhere on the view, we start receiving it. And there it is. There's maps. Okay, now let me just deselect that. And I'm gonna show you the second method. The second method to add input is through a script. We already have a script written in the samples. It's called object picker. So let me just add that. And I'm gonna show it to you right now. The script is very simple. In its update cycle, first it uh, sets the receives input property to all the views in the scene to false, which makes them uh, not take input. The receives input property controls whether a view accepts or doesn't accept input. So after this line of code, none of the views will take input. Next, we check if the coherent UI view is attached to a camera. 
and if it's attached to a camera we do a mouse query to see the whether the pixel below the mouse cursor is transparent or solid and if it's solid then we set the camera view receives input property to true and the camera view starts receiving input otherwise if the coherent UI component is not attached to, to a camera it should be attached to a 3D object so we make a ray cast and check the object that the ray hit if it has a coherent UI view component we set its receives input property to true and that component starts receiving input okay let me just show you that hit play we haven't clicked anything and we already have input that's how simple it is okay let's just remove the components from the camera form for now and we're going to attach the coherent UI view to a 3D object so let's get a mesh from the internet like type cube textures obj the second one and just uh, select all of these and copy paste it into a file for example cube textures obj we've already done that it's right here in the models folder cube textures just drag it into your scene adjust the position scale it up a bit and there it is the camera sees it so let's just add some light now okay and we're gonna add our components to the back face of the cube so just type in coherent UI view and object picker now before using coherent UI views on a 3d object there's one more important component that you need to add and that's the mesh collider the mesh collider allows unity to report the correct texture coordinates for the ray casts so we can deduce the mouse position inside the view okay so with all these three in place the coherent ui view the object picker and the mesh collider we can finally hit play and there it is we also have input okay now let's just delete the cube for now and add the coherent UI view and the object picker to the camera again let's just hit play and we're gonna see Google on the screen okay let me show you some more interesting site like the poster circle this website this animation is all done through CSS and it's a very good benchmark so as you can see we've already hit play in the editor so we can just paste it right here the new URL and it's going to be reloaded live there it is the poster circle in unity 3d okay so far we've only used internet web pages to display but in your game you're going to have a lot of local resources and you can read them using our custom protocol CoUI let me just show you an example page that we have here in UI resources this is the project folder UI resources menu and HUD HUD, HUD HTML and there's the page now I'm gonna open the game scene that's in the samples it's already configured to use coherent UI custom protocol here the main camera has a script as you can see CoUI, UI resources, menu and HUD, HUD, HUD HTML this URL is read through a virtual file system and the root of that virtual file system can be selected by using the edit menu, project settings, coherent UI, select UI folder and we're going to select the UI resources folder now the folder that we selected corresponds to the host portion of the URL here so UI resources there it is again UI resources and now when we hit play we're gonna see the interface right here there it is okay there's one last thing that I want to show you right now and that's the coherent UI debugger 
it's located in the coherent UI folder and we have one for each platform. I'm gonna open up the Mac one because I'm on a Mac right now. Let's open the DMG and we're gonna extract the app somewhere outside the assets folder of your Unity project because the app contains JavaScript files which cannot be compiled by Unity and you're going to have some project errors. Okay, so just check that and let's start the debugger. You're gonna see an address bar here, localhost port 9999. This is the default port for the coherent UI system. And let's just start again the scene. As you can see, we have two views in this scene, the cube and the heads up display. So when we hit go, we can see a list of all that available, uh, available views that we can debug. So let's just debug the current UI demo. This is the source code of the web page. And for the demonstration, I'm just going to delete the compass node. So when we get back to Unity, this compass here will be gone. There you go. It's not here anymore. So that's for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you find it interesting. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask us. And of course, stay tuned for more videos.